a long day. I am ready for bed, so why don't you come to bed with me? As a board certified dermatologist, I um, am trained, you know, we are trained to be the experts at all conditions of the skin, the hair, and the nails. And so we know a lot about these products that are out there, the skincare products, and know about the ingredients and what they do. But we definitely certainly have levels of how much we care about it. Um, some people have a really deep interest in it. I definitely am always aware of what I'm putting on my skin, but I am not crazy about it. I don't have a lot of steps in my regimen, but I do know my skin type. I am dry and I'm on the sensitive side. So I like to keep things to a minimum and I don't like to do things that aggravate my skin. The first step I'm gonna do is take off these eyelashes. I don't want wear eyelashes every day, but I had to do it today, of course, because you know we're gonna be on camera. And I want to use a really good oil uh, makeup removal. I, I've used this for years since I've been a teenager. It's by Facile, by Lancome. And I like to use, I found these really amazing, actually, um, cotton remover pads. I don't know, I'm a dork. Maybe everybody knows about this. But I don't like the ones you can buy in stores because they get like very linty. And I don't like Kleenex because it will tear. This is like Kleenex with a pad in it. And you can really soak them really well with these oils and just like dab them across your face. I don't like to rub because again, I'm very sensitive. So I like to just dab and let it soak up and remove my eye makeup. So that's the first thing that I do. So the next step is using my SLMD cleansing wipes. These are my favorite wipes. And also I dab at my face. I try to get off the excess makeup. And I don't rub because I'm more prone to getting rashes or irritation. And when you do that, you get more wrinkles because those change your skin and make you look more wrinkled and more and older, which we don't like. I mean, even like a, a washcloth is gonna create micro tears. So anything that's kind of abrading your skin, so you just need to be gentle. I use a hydrating facial cleanser and I alternate it with a salicylic acid cleanser because my two issues is that I'm really dry and it's because I'm darker complected, I'm prone to brown spots. So I like to use my SLMD salicylic acid cleanser and switch it out every other day with just a hydrating fa facial cleanser. This one's by CeraVe. And salicylic acid is really great because it's an exfoliant. It's gonna exfoliate and get rid of those dry, dull, dead skin cells on the surface of your skin so your skin is more radiant it's going to actually settle down within your pores too and help prevent new acne or from, from blackheads from forming and the trick is with salicylic acid cleansers is you can actually leave it on your face for a couple minutes if you wanted to and really that can help to increase the penetrance of it i mean i think in a cleanser you're going to wash it wash it off ultimately obviously but it's going to really help to get off any of this extra gunk that I missed with my wipes or with my um, eye makeup remover. So one thing that's really important, I think that's very important about washing face that I know is from a dermatologist's perspective is when you're washing your face, you're actually getting rid of moisture on your face. So you really, so you really want to not go really hot and you don't wanna go really cold either. You don't wanna shock your, your system really. You don't wanna shock your skin. Lukewarm water is the best. And I don't rub my face either. I just wash off the salicylic acid. So again, I dab, and I also, what's so important at this point is when your skin is still moist, that is the prime time to moisturize your skin, actually, because if your skin is wet, the um, just out in the air, your the, the moisture evaporates, and it actually pulls that moisture, the air pulls that moisture out of your skin and you get drier. That's why you kind of get that tight feeling after you wash your face and you sit around for a while. So this is the ideal time to put a moisturizer on. I like my SLMD Hyaluronic Acid Serum. Hyaluronic Acid, you've probably seen it in a lot of products these days. Well, Hyaluronic Acid is hydrophilic, meaning that it draws in water. When you put it on your skin, it's really gonna seal in that moisture and minimize what we call trans-epidermal water loss. And I'm more prone to that than others because I have dry skin. I actually have eczema, which is means that my barrier on my skin is not as good as other people, so I tend to lose moisture more easily. So I really need extra moisturizer. In fact, I could put Vaseline, I could put like petrolatum on my face and, and it won't break me out, I'm so dry. In terms of things that I wish that I um, 
had not done in the past. I wish I didn't rub my eyes so much. You know, I love my cats. I have cats and I can't give them up, but I probably shouldn't have cats in the, have had cats in the first place because I'm a little allergic to them and any kind of inflammation that you get, any irritation, any kind of like rash that you get can really age you actually. It, it's cumulative and it, and it really increases the wrinkles and increases the aging. But I also feel like, thank goodness I have good genes for my mom, so hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll balance out somehow. So at this point, I like to take a little break and let all of this soak in for a moment. And I like to put on my deodorant. At least it gives me a little break because this is a little secret that I have for you. Deodorant is best applied at night. It is most effective at night because you, you're putting it on when your sweat glands are the most dormant. So it's going to make it more effective. So this is the time that I put on deodorant. And I can't believe I'm doing that on camera. Okay, here you go. The reason I want this to settle in is because I like to put my moisturizer on before I put on any retinol or retinoid. These are products that we know as dermatologists, they've been around for generations and we know that they help to minimize fine lines and wrinkles over time. Retinol is an over-the-counter uh, version of this product. There's a prescription variety as well, but they are a little bit irritating to the skin. So I like to put moisturizer on before and I like to let it sit for a little bit. There is um, some question as to whether uh, retinol or retinoids interact with a moisturizer or lose their effectiveness because you apply them the same time as moisturizer. And I think there is some truth to that. And some people might actually put a retinol on before they put on moisturizer on. I just like to put the moisturizer on first because I really want to keep that moisture in my skin after I wash it. And I like to just let it sit for a little bit and then apply the retinol. And that makes me feel like it's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty effective then. This is something that I actually, I, I, I live by as well. The healing ointments, these are really important for me, again, because I'm saying I'm super dry. I put them everywhere. I put them in all around my lips and around my eyes at night. Um, and some people, be careful putting them around your eyes. They could promote milia, which are like these little baby cysts around the eyes. So some people can't tolerate that, but I can because I'm very dry. So I put them there to protect those areas too because you don't want to put a retinol close to your eyes. It, the skin there is too sensitive and it will irritate you. I get acne bumps every now and then. It's sort of like a uh, hormonal thing, which is with most of us women, we get hormonal acne. Usually for that sort of thing, I'm gonna put a benzoyl peroxide spot treatment on the area. Um, so I'm, I usually just, benzoyl peroxide is really great because it's antibacterial. And uh, I just will usually just spot treat the area. That works in two ways. It's gonna help destroy bacteria that are really thriving in that area. And also, it really keeps your hands off the area. The other thing that I can do that I'm sorry most of you guys can't do, just because I'm a dermatologist, I inject my own pimples. If I have one that I feel that's under the surface of the skin, if you have a dermatologist that you, um, that you see, you can potentially see them and they can give you a little shot of low potency corticosteroid in the area and it gets rid of the zit within 24 hours. So in general, I can get big ones, but I usually get rid of them within 24 hours. So it sucks for us because throughout our life we think, okay, why am I not done with acne? Isn't this supposed to be a teenage condition? But throughout our life, we're still getting acne, adult acne. Well, it's really common and it is completely driven by hormones. But remember, it's a good thing in a sense because it shows that you have hormones, that you're, that's a youthful thing, and to have oil in your face to get acne is a youthful thing. So um, try to remind yourself of that. The problem is that people will try to pop a pimple too early because it's there and you can't keep your hands off of it. I get it. If you just squeeze a pimple when it's too early, it will just get bigger and redder and angrier and end up worse. Um, the ideal time to really extract a pimple is when they're as close to the surface as they can be. You want to make sure any kind of pimple comes as close to the surface as you can because then you can just gently nick it if you do anything at all. Like, I'm a dermatologist, I'm not going to tell you to do anything. I don't want you to do anything. I, 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 I can't because I don't want you to be unsafe, but I know people are going to do it. So that's my best advice for you to just know that the more superficial something is in your skin, the less risk you have of permanently scarring yourself. A lot of blemishes that are red or brown, they're gonna go away, but that's probably from a lot of pushing and manipulating, so trying to leave things alone is the best thing to do. So I have a little zit here on my chin. I usually get them around my chin uh, certain times of the month, and so I actually have um, my own stock of low potency corticosteroids at home. I take them with me on vacations because that's usually when you get a zit. So I usually pull up a little bit of my little syringe here and I use a baby syringe needle and 
I just take my alcohol and clean the area off. Don't learn from me, okay? I just inject. That's it. So, but I'm not doing that because I want you to like learn from me. I mean, that's what we do in the office and you can see how easy it is. Um, and so a dermatologist can really do that and can, especially if you have a big event, like you have a prom, you have a wedding, uh, your photo's being taken, it's really great to have your, uh, your zit injected because it can make, get rid of them like so quickly. I'm gonna get nice and comfy and cuddle with my cats. All right, I'm ready for bed. I'm gonna go cuddle with little dim sum. So good night.